everyone, Renee here. So today's video comes really highly requested. I'm gonna show you a very basic routine and products for acne prone and oilier skin. This is more about prevention. I'm not gonna go very deeply into special treatments because that is really based on the individual and your own skincare needs. Today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the way our skin breaks out and from there have a better understanding of the kind of products and ingredients we should be looking for and our skin may need. There are many reasons why we break out and get zits on our face. Sometimes it's about hygiene, sometimes it's hormonal. At the end of the day, it's all about sebum, that thick waxy stuff that clogs up our pores and provides a very healthy environment for bacteria to grow because bacteria feeds on sebum. Like sebum is food for bacteria. So it all starts out with comedones, which are those little bumps on our skin. They are basically clogged pores. It's when your skin isn't turning over and thereby trapping all your oils and waxy sebum underneath. And that creates the bumpy texture. Those are pretty easily treated. They're not really painful. They're just kind of annoying. Those can be prevented or taken care of with exfoliation. And then there's inflammatory acne, which is when your skin has an inflammatory response to the clog pores. It's when the waxy sebum that's clogging your pores causes irritation to the hair follicle. And then there's bacteria growth, and usually that's when you see red bumps, whiteheads, blackheads. The cystic acne is the most severe form of that where the inflammation is major and it's very deep into the skin. Those are usually the large bumps that are very deep under the skin and hurt. This kind of acne is brutal, take a long time to clear, and they usually leave a scar. And then you've got the kind of hormonal acne that appears in your late 20s and 30s. That kind of acne appears on the lower third of your face, so around your jaw, and usually around one cycle. So basic routine for acne prone and oily skin need to be focused on five main concerns. Oil production and sebum control, skin congestion and skin buildup, soothing inflammation, preventing the growth of bacteria, and hydration, hydration, hydration. Double cleansing is important for every skin type, every body. Oil-based cleanser as a first step cleanser is really important. This can be an oil cleanser or it can be an oil-based sherbet cleansing balm. You just need it to draw out all the excess oil and sebum from the surface of your skin and these will do that better than any liquid cleanser. Or As for the second cleansing step, that's the step that actually cleanses your skin, whereas the first cleanser just takes off all the makeup and the sebum, all the excess stuff. And I will link the videos, but I do talk about how important it is that this second step cleanser needs to be of a low pH. If it's in the range of 5 or 5.5, that is absolutely ideal. Highly alkaline and stripping cleansers will disrupt the acid mantle on the surface of your skin, so it won't be able to keep out and discourage the growth of bacteria. If your skin is super oily, I prefer you use a low pH cleanser that has some salicylic acid in it, or any kind of BHAs for that matter. BHAs are oil soluble and they're very good at cutting through your sebum. So a perfect cleanser for oily and acne prone skin is this one from COSRX. It's the Good Morning Low pH Cleanser. Many of you are already familiar with COSRX. They're a brand that pledges to use the minimum of skin loving ingredients to maximum effect. This has a pH of 5 and is incredibly good at cleansing your skin. This gel cleanser is mildly foaming. It has a distinct tea tree oilish scent. It's sort of medicinal and very clean smelling. This contains a lot of skin soothing plant extracts and very high on the list is Saccharomyces ferment, which is the fermented yeast ingredient that makes up for 80% of our favorite Misha's first treatment essence, and that is so great at keeping our skin hydrated. Of course, there's tea tree oil in here, you can definitely smell it, and that's there for its antiseptic properties. For me, what makes this particularly good for acne prone or oily skin is the inclusion of an ingredient called betaine salicylate, which is a natural BHA and fantastic for cleaning out those pores. This is the BHA that most Korean cosmetic companies use. It is gentler, but still very effective. Now I feel like this is actually great for all skin types too, but when I love this particularly is after going to the gym, when I go. This is the most refreshing cleanser after a good sweat without being harsh at all. I don't believe in over cleansing your skin. I don't feel you need to double cleanse in the morning time. I think just one cleanser will be fine. A good option for your morning cleanse step is also micellar water, particularly the ones that have a little bit of sebum control. These liquids, when you're swiping them over your face with a cotton pad, attract oil particles and then lift them off. Whether these are powerful enough to remove a full face of makeup and sunscreen and lotions, not really, but if it's your bare clean face and you just want to remove some surface oil and debris, then that's perfect. 
for toner. I actually really enjoyed this one from CosRx again. It's their AHA BHA clarifying treatment toner. AHAs are great at dealing with the pigmentation aspect as well as the exfoliation. BHAs on the other hand go much deeper. They're oil soluble so they're really great at penetrating through the pores and getting deep into blemishes. You definitely are going to get some mild exfoliation using this. There's 0.1% of AHA and BHA in here. It's incredibly gentle, but this also contains 10% willow bark water, which is a natural occurring gentle BHA, as well as 10% apple fruit water, which is a naturally occurring AHA. It also replaces regular water with 10% mineral rich water, which of course is infinitely better at nourishing our skin. I actually find this to be very gentle on the skin. I've even misted it on um, over my eyes and everything. I find this to be non-drying, non-irritating. There's zero alcohol in here. I think this is a great toner for a basic routine. And I really believe that it's great at preparing the skin for oncoming products to work better as well. If this were my personal morning routine, this is where I would apply my vitamin C serum. The reason why vitamin C serums should go on right after toner or a lot of times for me even right after cleansing my skin is because it's pH sensitive. And my nighttime routine, or anytime I'm not using a vitamin C serum, it would be toner essence serum. So the vitamin C products that you've seen me use are usually around 15% and the effects of that last for about 72 hours apparently. So I only use it once a day, I choose morning time. It's an antioxidant, so it really protects your skin from the outside environment. So it's great at preventing and erasing pigmentation as well as brightening up the skin. Depending on what your skin needs, this is where the essences come in. If your need is a little bit of hydration, some brightening, anti-aging, then I personally am loving the Galactomyces Niacin from Manufactory. Over time, this is really going to strengthen your skin, keep it hydrated and plump and bright. And it's an organic brand. Tea tree essences are also very popular for acne prone and oily skin. I've been really impressed by this Wonder Tea Tree Essence from D apostrophe Ran. This again is another skincare brand with a very similar philosophy to CosRx, whereby they are just very focused on putting in good ingredients, skin loving ingredients, not including anything unnecessarily that might irritate your skin or be bad for your skin. This is cruelty free, contains no parabens, mineral oils, artificial dyes or fragrances. This is dermatological, this will soothe and hydrate and purify your skin as well as control sebum throughout the day. This comes out sort of gel-like and viscous though once you apply it, it just sort of disappears into your skin. It just becomes like a thin liquid. I also feel like this has a slight mattifying effect as well. This barely has a fragrance. If it smells of anything, it disappears within seconds. All the ingredients here are basically focused on soothing, anti-inflammatory and antibacterial. It's got the willow bark extract, it's got the tea tree leaf extract, niacinamide, fermented ingredients. It has the humectants to hydrate the skin and a bunch of soothing and calming plant extracts. Other essences or serums that you might want to consider are ones that contain a lot of snail mucin because that is a fantastic ingredient for acne prone skin. It's really good at healing your skin promoting cell regeneration, it's got natural glycolic acid in it, and it's even been shown to help fade scars. So for moisturizers, if you find your skin very dehydrated, whether you're just naturally dehydrated or if it's from treatment, then I definitely recommend the Hadalabo Gokujun Hyaluronic Acid Lotion for at least one layer. Because the more hydrated your skin is, the less thick waxy sebum your skin is gonna produce to keep hydration in. You don't want one heavy occlusive layer of cream because that doesn't necessarily address the hydration situation and it can actually cause a lot of congestion which is the last thing on earth you want. So light layers of hydration is the way to go. If you are super oily then like I said in my moisturizers video you may even want to stop here. A moisturizer that I've been surprisingly loving is actually this one from CosRx. It's their oil-free ultra moisturizing lotion. I've always stayed away from oil-free products because most of them have absolutely done nothing for me ever. But I really wanted to try this because it was like an emulsion type moisturizer that I could actually even layer under other moisturizers and I was actually so impressed with how hydrating it is. I remember the first time using it, I used it alone without layering anything over it and the next morning waking up, my skin was plump and hydrated. This formula replaces water with 70% birch sap, which is a humectant. It's all about the hydrating properties in this, but it also contains amino acids, vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, enzymes, and that's pretty much what makes this just so moisturizing without being greasy at all. These two layered on top of each other is gonna give you all the hydration you're gonna need. Yes. Now, if your skin has more needs, if you have um, mature skin or anti-aging, or you just want more, you want a bigger punch rather than just moisturization, then my 
favorite cream is the Crystal Ice Plant. All the texture of this is just so light and refreshing. This is a pressed serum. I did a review on it. And these are multifunctional products. These are serums that are also moisturizers. This uses 63% ice plant extract, which is nutrition and hydration in hostile surroundings. Ice plants grow in deserts. This formula also contains a tremendous amount of just skin-loving fermented roots and oils. If you want to continue to layer on the hydration and treat your skin, then you can also use sleeping masks. The one that I've been loving a lot, which I featured in one of my monthly favorites, is this one from Kosar X. It's their Ultimate Moisturizing Honey Overnight Mask. This is 85% propolis and royal jelly, which is just antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and it's just so hydrating and great for healing your skin. Overnight, this infuses your skin with so much hydration while also calming it and healing it. And for me, I love using it with the oil-free moisturizer. A great mask is from Freeset. It's the donkey milk. It's the healing one. I actually find this really quite powerful. This is no joke. The healing version of these donkey milk masks is really meant to be for troublesome skin. And it's really meant to help repair, soothe, and calm your skin down. This contains botanical extracts that are soothing, anti-inflammatory, and astringent. But really high up on the list is licorice root extract. Great at soothing and brightening the skin. So licorice root extract is something that geishas used a lot. Donkey milk has also been used in skincare for centuries now. Cleopatra famously bathed in it. It is moisturizing, healing, and nourishing for your skin. When you use this, you're supposed to wear it for about 20 minutes. There is definitely a heavy tingling that occurs that eventually goes away. And when you remove the mask, your skin actually feels very calm. It feels very cool. I feel like some of the redness is gone and it's just smooth and bright. Now, when it comes to cleansing pores and extracting gunk from it, I feel like I'd be remiss if I don't mention clay. I have this one here from Skin and Lab. It is the Dr. Pore Tightening Glacial Clay Facial Mask. You use this over your entire face, I would say once a week, depending on the condition of your skin and how much you can handle this, because this is incredibly powerful. For me, I only use this on areas of concern, areas that are prone to congestion, and I will do this as needed. And now, if your skin is really easily irritated, you might want to be a little cautious. This uses Canadian colloidal clay, which I feel has been so effective at extracting impurities from your skin. And this definitely makes your skin feel tighter afterwards. And this also contains oatmeal, which is just so great at soothing, irritated, inflamed skin. This also contains tea tree oil, and the rest of the ingredients are really focused on anti-inflammatory. So if you have very, very sensitive skin, you may not be able to take this because when it's on your skin, you definitely have that um, like aggressive tingling. I don't want to use the word burning, but that's kind of what it feels like, but it's not the burning from irritation. It's a burning from activity. Thing is, after removing this, your skin will just feel so clean, so calm. Because this is so effective at extracting the toxins and impurities, your pores actually do look smaller after using this. There's no hard, waxy sebum that's sitting in your pores, stretching it out. This is also something that's great to use on your body and treat acne that you may have on your body. And speaking of body and body acne, this Murad body wash is fantastic. This contains 1% salicylic acid in it. This will deep cleanse, it will exfoliate, will heal, it will soothe. This is a great preventative acne wash to use. For individual spot treatment, I absolutely love these. This is CasaRx's Acne Pimple Master Patch. So these are little hydrocolloid patches that are mainly used to treat medical wounds and heal them. So these are really good at protecting your already inflamed spots from further aggravation and exposure to more infection. There are 24 stickers of different sizes depending on how large your problem is. These guys stay on forever. They stay on through the shower. If you forgot that they were there, they would just stay on for days. These won't slip, they won't slide, they're not going to budge. It treats your spots by eliminating and keeping out bacteria. It helps absorb your whitehead stuff and flattens out your spots faster. And even though this patch is intended to be worn overnight, I actually wear it during the day. You really can't tell that you have it on sometimes. As far as makeup goes, um, I came across a very interesting item, which some of you have asked me um, to review. But this is the Trial Peel H Plus Cushion. What intrigues me about this cushion, particularly in the case 
of skin with acne is that it's supposed to be made up of 99% skincare and only 1% makeup and pigment. So this goes back to the old school original concept of what a BB cream is, which is something that people can use post procedure to cover up redness and scarring without hurting and damaging their already compromised and raw healing skin. So this goes back to that premise and trial peel is actually a peel procedure. So they came out with a BB cream and now they have a cushion. So it's supposed to heal and give coverage. This is definitely better for sensitive skin. They even have a pattern in the way the sponge is here because all the products stay in the middle of the sponge rather lingering in the bottom or completely absorbed by the entire sponge. So it just keeps things a little more hygienic. Unfortunately, there's only one shade in this, but that shade is pretty light. And I will tell you this much, all I did was press down once on the cushion and that was enough to cover my entire face and the coverage is pretty high. I feel this is definitely better for oilier skin rather than dry skin because it does have a pretty decent amount of coverage and it will cover up most of um, your discolorations, if not all. You cannot neglect sunscreens, so important when you have acne, you essentially have little wounds on your skin and it protects itself from the sun when it's not being properly protected by creating melanin and pigment and that in turn gives you more scarring. With oily and acne prone skin, the mineral sunscreens will work really well for you. The zinc oxide in particular is a great anti-inflammatory and that together with titanium dioxide usually create a very mattifying effect on the skin. Personally, I think the powders are amazing for so many reasons. Usually for zinc and titanium dioxide to work in a cream or lotion form, the formula is going to be bombarded with like silicones and dimethicones to sort of give a more smooth um, texture on your skin so that's not like white cast mask thick goopy substance particularly if you're acne prone that may really not work for you silicones aren't always your friend as for these mineral powders you don't have like a white cast they actually sit really well on your skin it's mattifying and it's so easy to touch up and since we are talking about um, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide which are the main ingredients in, in both of these they work better if they're applied as the last layer on your skin. So it forms a shield, a shield that's like all the sun rays are just reflecting and bouncing off of it. Reapplying is so easy. These are invisible on the skin. But so that's it, guys. I mean, there definitely are so many more things that you can do that are not involving products when it comes to taking care of your skin if you're acne prone or oily. And those lifestyle things are something I plan to address in another video. Meanwhile, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions for me, please leave them down below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'm wishing you great skin health. Bye.